and, and here's the biggest problem in this thing. Number one is you'll enter into this business if you're starting it or if you're into it now because you had a goal for your life and something you wanted to accomplish. You got no idea how to get there. So you start doing the work and you start working, you start working, you start working. And then one of two things happens. Either A, it goes really, really well, which is almost never the case, but it goes really, really well. Or B, it doesn't go well at all. And you get to a position where you go either A, where it's going really, really well, or it's not going well, where you say, I'm going to sell this thing. I want to get out of it. I want to give it up to somebody else. I'm bored with it. I don't want to do it anymore. Or I'm feeling trapped. Here's the question. How do you sell it? What's the calculation you actually need to put in place to know that all this blood, sweat, tears, and work you put in, somebody wants to buy. So here's a scenario where somebody was doing really, really, really well. I had a chance to talk with them. Um, I had ended up in the conversation because um, I got there because I thought I was going there to help them and they thought I was coming there to buy their business. So it was a really interesting cup of coffee because we were both coming from different angles. And when I went through his business with them, I said, well, how much revenue did you guys make? I said, well, first of all, how much do you want for your business? He said, I want half a million dollars. I said, no problem. Let's look at this half a million dollar investment. First question I asked is, do you own the real estate? He said, no, I rent the real estate. I said, okay, how old, the, how old is the equipment in your shop? Well, it's about 15 to 20 years old. I said, okay, well, how many staff do you have? I've got 10 staff. How many hours do you work? He said, well, about 60 to 70 hours a week. Okay, so what do you do in that time frame? Is it just operational stuff or what do you do? He's like, no, well, most of the time I'm in the back welding stuff or I'm selling stuff to customers or I'm dealing with the paperwork or I'm dealing with front end stuff. He said, so basically you're doing everything and the staff is kind of assisting you. He said, yeah, that's a good way to put it. I said, well, how much money did you pay yourself last year? I said, well, I paid myself about 70 grand. When was the last time you took a vacation? Well, about four years ago. I said, so just so I'm clear, you want me to write you a check for half a million dollars for property that you don't own, equipment that's 20 years old, to work 80 hours, 40 to 80 hours a week to make 50 grand a year. Why would I do that? Wouldn't. Right? And Shouldn't. Would, and when he looked at you, he said, I never thought of it that way before. <clears throat> And so there's the, what you think is the emotional value of the business, and then there's the actual value of a business. So we're actually going to walk you through what you need to do to properly evaluate a business so that way you know when you're starting this thing, you can actually either A, flip it fast for a profit because you know how to build it so it's profitable, B, acquire other, comp other your competitors so you know what to do to make them profitable and flip their businesses if you take it over from them, or C, just have a plan to sell your business in the future. And just to be clear, before we get into that formula, you know, to what Dennis just said, the business isn't valued based on how much work you've done. Yeah, nobody cares. Yeah. No. <laughs> so the example you just gave it a half million, that's because that person thought, well, I've put so much work into this. I've been so underpaid. I need to get a half million to sell my business. But why would somebody buy that and pay a half million? So remember that, you know, <laughs> it's great to make your fair salary. It's great to make a profit. But at the end, what are you going to sell your business for? What's it going to be worth? And how do you get it to be worth something somebody wants to pay a premium for? That's huge. And if you build it to where somebody wants to buy a premium, you end up in a bidding war. More people want to buy it. Right. And before we get into that calculation and we get deep dive into it, just think about it this way. There's a ton of people right now teaching how to buy a businesses for no money. How to go in and buy a business for somebody else for no money, making sure that you've got no dollars to come in, but you can go buy a business. Every one of those businesses that you can buy for no money, one, the owner's got no idea what they're doing. Two, everything's falling apart. You're going to end up inheriting a problem. And three, generally what's called, it's called by vendor financing. So they want the business owner to write to, to basically take off money from the top and basically graduate you into the business. Well, they don't care if you fail because the whole thing's falling apart anyway. So it's like a, it's like a lose, lose situation for everybody involved. If you're looking to acquire an actual business and you want to buy it for no money down, have a ton of business skills and turn it around quickly. Or make sure you find one that's doing really, really well and buy into that one. And there's a reason why McDonald's is a million bucks cash to buy. Yeah. You're buying the system. So here's how you actually evaluate a business. And I'll let Greg do this one because it's probably one of his favorite slides to teach. Yeah. So it's simple. There's three things. Number one, um, proprietary value. So let's say you're a toy company and you own the Rubik's Cube patent and your toy company is going bankrupt. <clears throat> For sure, the Rubik's Cube patent is worth something. Um, Sears, as everybody knows, Sears went down. Well, Sears sold the Craftsman brand name to Lowe's yeah. for a ton of money because it was proprietary value. But that never sat on the balance sheet 
as a value. So, you know, the, the, the Craftsman brand wasn't on the Sears balance sheet like a forklift was. There's no cash value on the balance sheet for that item. So rarely is there a proprietary value. It's very rare. So that's the first piece of the formula. Second piece of the formula is the assets on the balance sheet. So now you're talking about, you know, computers and desks and cars and trucks and tools and anything that your business bought and, and owns and that values on the balance sheet. Now that value is usually pretty clear. It's either um, what the balance sheet says it's worth, meaning it's been depreciated or devalued, or it may have been depreciated for less or more than it's worth today. I mean, you got to go check out what you think it's worth street value. Like what would you buy that used wrench for that used truck or that used computer? So that's the second piece of the formula. So it's proprietary value plus assets. The third piece of the formula is what they call goodwill. Now goodwill is a gray area. So it's basically how much profit did I make times how many years? Well, the profit you made, is as Dennis alluded to earlier, profit after a fair salary. So they're gonna do an adjustment. They're gonna put a fair salary in your expenses and then we'll see what the profit's left after. And I gotta tell you, in most cases, businesses find out, as Dennis said earlier, it's zero. So the value is zero, then zero times any number of years you want is still zero. And that's how most of them find out their company's worth nothing. Now, if there is a profit there after salary, then it's how many years you're willing to pay for that profit. And usually if your company is Bob with truck and you're a plumber, then the max somebody will pay is one year's profit. If you graduate past Bob with truck and you have a company and you have say a team with five or 10 trucks and a bunch of customers and lots of predictable revenue, then it's that profit times so many years. So literally you could take a company and say, if it's guy with truck, and expand it to guy that owns company that has 10 trucks. Now you got, you know, systems in place where those people show up in the company, they join the company, they predictably know what to do. Uh, you can go on holidays, company still makes money. Company's not reliant on you, the owner. Then somebody might pay five times that profit. So our goal with any company is to put the fundamentals in place to get you to the point where you're A, making a profit after your salary, and B, you got the systems in place that values the company at closer to five times, which means you can have the profit times five years, plus the assets, plus the proprietary value, and now your company's worth a whole lot more. You can take a company and in two years, we've seen clients go from zero value to two and a half, three million dollars value, just like that. And not in complicated industries. No. Exactly. There, there's, there's simple, highly competitive industries that anybody could come and buy the business from them and be successful at it because it's all done properly. Yeah. I mean, in case in point, even, even the company that Greg worked with, the FGL group, they ended up selling for like 780 million bucks. So they had a really good run and they got a really nice paycheck at the end of it all when they ended up selling the company. So don't devalue this. And the other thing about business valuation you have to consider is that the majority of business brokers I've ever talked to get this wrong. And you're going to take a look at different business listings and stuff. If you're ever going to go buy it, you're going to see things like, well, cash flow is 1.2 million or this or this. They confuse so many terms and you don't even know what you're looking at. So you can even use a formula, a formula like this if you want to buy a business and actually be able to rip it apart and know what it's actually worth before you buy it, which is what somebody's going to do to you if you're going to go and sell it. And I actually, and I, and go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. I was going to say I helped a client acquire a business because we sat down with a guy who wanted to have $120,000 for his company. And we ripped it all apart at the table. And basically what it turned out to was, well, at the end of the day, we ended up paying him, I think, four grand for the whole thing. Because by the time it all worked out and the way he structured the deal, it wasn't worth even close to what he wanted for it. But he thought it was worth more because he put all the time in. Yeah. So, <clears throat> excuse me, good exercise for you to go through watching this is when this video is done, go do that exercise. Value your business today. What's a proprietary value? What are the assets on the balance sheet? Just go look at your balance sheet at the asset portion, not cash on bank, not receivables, not payables, just the assets. And then go look at your profit after a fair salary. So adjust your P&L, put a fair salary, and then see what your profit is. And then multiply that by how many years, and you got to pick. If you don't have very many systems in place, and you're always, if the company's reliant on you up here, maybe you might get two times value. Maybe. 
But if you got it systemized where anybody could, where you could literally leave and someone could walk in and within one week they're up to speed, they know exactly what's going on, they don't even need to call you, then you might get closer to four or five times that profit. So our goal with this class is to get you the four or five times an actual profit. But go value your business today and see what's worth. You can see the difference. And you can see the opportunity. And if you're just starting it, what do you want to be able to sell something for? That's an important mm -hmm. number to have written down. Um, and so I've actually, this Greg's comment there about if it's running by itself and you go to vacations, I've had people say, well, why would I want to sell it then? Here's why you still want to prepare to sell it, even if you get to that level, is you only have so many games you want to play and you might just get sick and tired of having that business. If you get to the position where you're emotionally tired of it, you always want the option to sell. So the whole point of this whole thing is don't just build it to make money now. Don't just build it to make profit now. Build it so that way when you sell it, you can do a lot more with that money that comes in. And by the way, markets go up and down, currencies fluctuate and change, and assets and asset, the value is the value. So if superinflation kicks in, you can still sell it for the value that the market will pay for it. So yeah. keep it in mind, always build with the end goal. So whether you're running it now or you're building it to sell it, figure out what you want from it and it'll give you a good place to start. Hey guys, Dennis Tackman here and thank you for watching. If you like this video, make sure you go to presenticlass.com. We've got the entire thing laid out so that way you know how to take your business from startup all the way through to sale if you want to and the things to look up in between as you're going. Also, if your business right now is in a situation where it's just not giving you the lifestyle that you want or things just aren't going the way you want to, you need to fix it, presenticlass.com is also built to help you out as well. So check out presenticlass.com and we'll see you there.